Hey, so today I want to talk about James Wan, much talked about 2021 film Malignant. Uh, I think this film was marketed as a horror film because James Wan has always predominantly done horror films and I guess there is no just big box to put it but whether I count it as a horror film is kind of a little bit of a different story. Now, this film stars Annabelle Wallace and she is actually what actually binds the whole thing together. The other characters are kind of there but they don't really need to be so I'm just gonna focus on her character. And this film, uh, one said, is kind of uh, inspired from or actually you know tries to mimic the vibe of Jalo films and Jalo films are actually a kind of Indian, uh, Italian subgenre in 19, I guess the 1960s and 70s when actually Dario Argento a kind of blew up in the sea and he made a lot of Jalo films, Suspira being one of the most famous ones and there are a lot of other ones. But now sitting here in 2021 when James Gunn tries to go after this vibe, I don't know how much it would be kind of you know uh, understandable to the audience if you do not have any kind of uh, predetermined understanding of what Jalo is or if what that kind of thing tries to represent. I know what Jalo films are but looking at this for once I didn't even think about Jalo films. It's not like I haven't watched a lot of Jalo films but still I don't think Jalo is actually the first category or subgenre of film that comes in mind when you watch Malignant. Now this film's main story credit actually goes to James Wan but it's also written with uh, Akela Cooper and Ingrid Bisu and Akela Cooper is actually the sole screenplay writer of this film. Now. I personally take a lot of stock about what's you know going behind the screen and what's going in the pre-production. So James Wan had the story, but he didn't actually write it. And I would say that yeah, that's something to write because this film kind of feels like that. This film feels like they had a strong idea and they just kind of want to build around it. And then uh, it's being James Wan, and he's way more popular now. He has like two billion dollar crossing films now. So they kind of like give him a little more, bit more money and this film just mushroomed into a different thing. So as far as context, I think that's what I was actually going on behind the scene in Malignant. Now, a lot of people has actually tried to defend this film as campy or camp or, you know, a film that's kind of, you know, self-aware or understands itself or doesn't take itself so seriously. I don't think this film is necessarily camp. I feel like this is a little off kilter and the larger question is was it intentional or was it just what how you know they were trying to just fill in the gaps because i all, all, all i told you that yeah. this seems like a film that didn't have a you know full story behind it this film like a uh, like has a story uh, as a just uh, gist of it or what he wants to do and then other people came and wrote the screenplay and the film got made so in this way this film kind of gets bogged down into a lot of things that wasn't necessary the first problem, not actually problem, but the first uh, thing that kind of threw me off, this film is one and a, one hour and 51 minutes long. No horror film needs to be ever that big. The greatest horror films that humanity has ever told has never been that big. Horror films has to be succinct, precise, and just, you know, don't overstay its welcome. Malignant kind of overstays its welcome by a long shot. This film should have been one and a half hour. It should have been a strict 90 minute cut. But I guess James Wan means James Wan, these are all those things. Now, for a uh, fight scene, and that's where the horror thing kind of goes out of the window, James Wan did a James Wan thing where he kind of uh, did a set piece and an action scene where things were just panning and there were a lot of wide angle shots and things looked just very calm. This looked awesome in Aquaman. I wish he had have done something like it in Fast and Furious 7. I don't think he did it. But in Aquaman, it was awesome to see because all the shaky cam and you know hyper tense kind of action scenes are not good. But when I was watching it, the CGI was not good. The CGI was actually very rough. At a certain point, the CGI reminded me of what was happening in Matrix Reloaded and in 2021, that's not a good thing. The CGI also felt, uh, you know, they didn't have enough time to kind of complete it in a way that will be cohesive and certain other character aspects in the film also didn't go with the vibe of the action. You will understand when you see it, but it's not that kind of, you know, polished thing that you expect from a uh, veteran director at this point. It's like James Wan, who has done a lot of things in India. So, basically what I would say that there's a lot of 
contesting ideas and contesting ideologies or even genres are kind of at fight with this and that's what uh, kind of made this a very divisive film so as far as, as if I like it or not I would say yeah it's an okay film I, I don't think there's much debate to be had about whether this film is really good or really bad or this film has cult potential it or not uh, this thing we did one thing that uh, a lot of film does and I kind of got give him a very, very praise for it because films are you know very quick to lay out the whole plot or in the trailer the trailer doesn't give anything away but this film kept me in dark for like an hour which is fine it's not a problem but the problem is this film is one and a half, one hour and 52 minutes it's a two hour film it doesn't earn that two hour and with more than an hour you are in the dark but when suddenly even a little bit of hint comes you will understand the whole story if you have seen a lot of films so right in the middle of it uh, when I watched the trailer I kind of knew what was going on because it was very obvious there's not a lot of characters in this film but in halfway when suddenly the thing clicked and this was the whole film so it's a really simple premise and because it's just coaxed in a way and sandwiched in a way that there's a lot of things before and a lot of things after it just got a little floated for me I think this film would have been way better if it was 90 minutes the storylines are absolutely fine Annabelle Wallace really holds this film together because if she didn't give what this film needed this film would, wouldn't work at all or at, at least as much as it works now the background character is just there it's not that important so if you were to see a kind of off filter film that is just okay uh, because a director like James Wan who has a lot of other films and most likely will do a lot of good things in future this I think would be his mediocre one or his, his below average film so that's why I give this film a strong 2.5 out of 5 because it's just a divisive film and it's just a okay film